This is the Harvest Tank from Dovepo. This is a top fill, sub-ohm clear miser tank. And here's the packaging. Let's go ahead and look at this up close. The makers of the Executive 5.0 and the Punisher 80 watt temperature control now have their own authentic tank. Excited to see this. I saw it in New Jersey at the New Jersey Vape Expo in July. Wasn't ready yet. And here it is. Made of 304 stainless steel and Pyrex glass, five milliliter juice capacity, two bottom airflow holes, three drip tip airflow holes, and the size is 22 millimeters by 73.8 millimeters high. Resistance 0.2 ohms with the pre-built nickel coil, 0.5 ohms with the normal coil. I'm assuming that's canthol and is normal. And the coils are compatible with the Kanger sub-tank. That is good to know, thank you. You know, people are always asking me, what coils can you use? I never am sure. DovePoeSig.com. This was sent to me by Jordan, who works for DovePo directly. And here it is, all snuggled in nicely in this foam. Here is the normal coil, the 0.5 ohm, which is good from 15 watts to 60 watts. Normal coil. And this is the tank. It's kind of smart looking. Look at that. 304 stainless. Pin protrudes nicely. Please do not use this on hybrid mech mods. And I wouldn't recommend using it on mech mods at all. Use it on a regulated device so you can find that range of wattage and power that you like to vape. And whatever you do, don't vape that nickel coil on anything other than a temperature control device. Don't vape that on a mech mod. Thank you. Okay, so here we go. Laser etched harvest tank. The Dovepo logo on there. Very nicely done. Look at this. The tank is protected by this stainless steel housing. I see some nice grippy indentations here. Wouldn't call that knurling, but some scalloped pattern there to grip. And we've got a drip tip. It's got airflow in the drip tip. Let's look at that close up. Adjustable airflow. Ooh, look at that. Three holes, two holes, one hole. Closed off all the way. Very nice. Two of those using one O-ring. All right. Fits in there pretty snugly. Very snugly. Okay, and you got some ridges over here for grip as well. And there's some nice, you know how I like my knurling. There's some good knurling on this bottom so you can grip that and take the tank off. But let's look at that top fill before we go look at the coil. Here's top fill on this tank. Easy to get off, that was nice. And here's my Okay, so my threads are on the chimney piece. And this is your top fill, two holes there. Okay, one hole for breathing and the other big enough to get a dripper, dropper bottle tip in there with those O-rings, okay. I'm, ha I'm happy with that. I'm satisfied with that. It's, it's quite simple. Nothing to screw up. And if you over drip, at least there's a pan here to catch that. So you're not going to make a mess. Okay, very good. Couple of turns and it's on. Doesn't need any more than that. Now let's look at that coil. And I just saw there's spare parts for those O-rings. So here is the... Let's take this off completely. That's nice. See, there's there's a green O-ring here indicating their nickel coil, NI200. 
This is a 0.2 ohm resistance, 15 watt to 60 watt. So what I'm going to say is this. You see that, that tells you it's nickel. It's not a standard in the industry, but it is, it is showing you there's a differentiation between this coil and this coil, which is normal coil. All right. This is not intended to be vaped on anything except temperature control. So that 0.2 ohm resistance, you can fire that on a lot of non-temperature control devices. And I'm just mentioning to you that you're not supposed to do that. Keep nickel with your temperature control. Okay, enough said on that. So you got two wicking holes. There's the cotton in there, organic cotton. And here is our coil. You can look down in there. All right, pretty straight up. Single wire, not paralleled or anything, nothing fancy, just good old vertical bottom coil with organic cotton. All right, let's look at this base. Nice solid to thick base, gonna disperse heat. Let's look at this airflow. Got two airflow Cyclops slots and that airflow, that's your airflow control, just a nice smooth glide no clicking, but plenty of tension. If you turn it halfway closed, it's not going anywhere. It's not wobbly. It's not moving around. That's great. And it moves freely 360 degrees in either direction. There's your O-ring that's going to seal the tank to this base. Let's screw in this. There's an O-ring on the coil as well. This real quick, this is where your positive and negative leads come through. There's your negative up top, and there's your positive right there. See that? That's the clipped end of the positive. Put this back in the base. Everything's very smooth. Threads. So we're going to we're going to leave that out for a minute. Actually, let's go ahead and prime this up a little bit. I happen to be vaping on a berries and cream, berries, no, strawberry yogurt. This is from Mission Elixir's Benefaction. Then I'll show you the spare parts this comes with. I always want to give our coils a little bit of time to absorb some juice. I'm just going to drip some on the top. Not much. Give that time to absorb in. We'll go into from the sides as well. Put a drip there. And a drip there. Yeah, it's absorbing in very, rather quickly. It's probably enough to prime it. I think we can go ahead and fill this. We'll go bottom fill for now. Very nice and easy. wide. I don't have to be a target shooter to get my juice in here. Plenty of room there between the chimney and the glass. Fill that up to the base of the chimney. Good. So here's our bottom fill. And again, this is the nickel NI200 coil in here. That's our bottom fill. So far, so good. Move this off to the side. 
So you can keep an eye on it while it while it works. Okay. What else is in this box here? There's always goodies in here. You got to check just in case. Actually, there's nothing else in this box. Just one extra coil. That's it. There's no spare glass. All right, this is giving me some directions. What do these instructions say? Well, that's my instructions on how to fill it top fill. That's it. Pure and simple. One extra coil, the canthal coil, and then a bunch of these extra O-rings. These are the top fill O-ring holes, O-ring things. Got it. Now let's take a look back at this top fill. How easy or hard is it to fill? easy. If you want to be a little more patient, use a unicorn bottle. Okay, so when it fills, it may bubble up out the other side. So go slowly with that. Pretty good. This is what I mean. Um, you know, be careful. I dripped a little bit. It's not the tank's fault. It's user error, but that juice isn't going anywhere. So once I, once I clamp this down, that's fine. I didn't make as much of a mess as I might have. All right, there we go. That's our tank. That's our harvest tank. I like that drip tip. Look at that drip tip. It's like a long drip tip. I don't typically like to have these Airflow control open. All right, let's go ahead and vape on it. And we're going to vape on it today in the Punisher 80. Let's unbox this as well. This is an 80 watt temperature control box mod. Again, from Dovepo. Here's the instruction manual. Here's a firmware update cable. I don't believe that's for charging the battery internally. Might be, but I don't think you need it for that. Look how nice this thing is. Oh, and it did pass its QC inspection before it left. So this is it. Look how nice this thing is. It fits my hand like perfectly. This fits my grip. It's not too tall. It's not too short. It's got a nice rubber paint coating on it. Very Vapor Shark esque Punisher 80. And there's the Dove Po logo. This is how you remove the battery. That's it. Battery door is held on with magnets top and bottom. Very solid. It's not rattly. It's not shaky. It's not going anywhere. That's not accidentally going to pop off. And I'm using a 2500 milliamp hour Samsung 25R, 25 amps. Take this out and show you the battery contacts. Very clearly marked positive and negative side. You've got that Nice brass contacts, and this one has a spring. So you're going to line up that negative, push it against the spring, put the battery in, and your battery's in, installed, and on. This thing will remember your last setting, even after you take the battery out. So it has like power off memory, and here's where that micro USB connects. Let's see what that's for. By the way, one, two, three, four, five, turns it off. One, two, three, four, five, turns it on. 
pitch that 80 watts. Hold these two down. Now it's in temperature control mode. Hold these down again. It's in bypass mechanical mode, straight up voltage. It's showing me I have four volts on my battery. Hold these two down again. It's in wattage mode. I'm gonna put it in temperature control mode. Okay, I'm gonna put in temperature control mode at 450 degrees. Okay. Nickel, it goes all the way up to 572. And then I believe what you do is plus and power. Yeah, no kidding. Plus and power. See how that's blinking? Now I can starts blinking. Now I'm going to change the wattage. The wattage that I'm asking it to power up my build in temperature control, that's like joules on an IPV product, right? Then it stopped blinking, I was done. So it's gonna power at 50 watts and it's got a maximum temperature setting of 450 at which it will back off power and or stop completely. All right, here's the instruction manual, read this. It tells you the specs, 91 millimeters high by 43 three millimeters wide by 24 millimeters deep zinc alloy rubber paint all right operating voltage 3.4 volts to 4.2 volts off one battery obviously maximum output current 28.5 amps operating wattage 5 to uh, 80 watts temperature control mode available nickel 200 coil working resistance 0.1 ohms to 1 ohms 0.1 to 1 Temperature control range 212 degrees Fahrenheit to 572 degrees Fahrenheit. And the standard atomizer working resistance range in wattage mode is 0.1 ohms to 3 ohms. The Punisher 80 will automatically detect whether a temperature sensing nickel Ni200 or standard Canthal coil is attached when in temperature control mode. So it doesn't automatically go into temperature control mode, but it will automatically pop out of temperature control mode if you have canthal in there, just because it can't read the temperature, the resistance coefficient of canthal. Short circuit protection, low voltage protection, over voltage protection, overheat protection, battery reversal protection, overtime vaping warning, power off memory function, using 18650 external battery, charger required, DC five volts, one amp, Charging time, three to five hours. So this is not, this is not for internal charging. Good, thank you. Didn't want it anyway. Get yourself a charger, they cost 12 bucks. Get yourself a battery, they cost anywhere from six to 12 bucks. And then that's it. Okay. There you go. These are the different functions of the mod. It's got a sleep mode after 30 seconds. All right. Now, wattage mode, we're not going to go into. I'm going to come up top and vape on this and talk about it a little bit. There you got the harvest tank. You've got the Dove Poe Punisher 80. Very nice setup. These are sold in a combo kit, and this is plenty of power to power any of the existing sub ohm tanks comfortably and vaping well with the equipment available in the market today 80 watts it's great in the hand the weight's good the balance is good the tank is not top heavy on there it's perfectly proportioned all right let's go up top and vape and talk about this hey guys okay we're back up top talking about the dove po punisher 80 mod and the Harvest Tank, both from Dove Po. This is the kit. They look great together. We just took a look at the up close and personal on this. I have it in temperature control mode. So watch what it's going to say here. It says new atomizer up down. Yes. Focus would be great. Not going to focus. Okay. So I'm just going to say yes. It's a new coil. So just it just read the resistance. 
for some reason it's reading 0.36 and the nickel coil is supposed to be 0.2 ohms. Now we're going to, I'm going to lock in the power key lock. Now, oh, key unlock. Okay. And I'm at 50 watts in temperature control with a max temp setting at 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Breaking in a brand new coil. So I don't want to just jump right in there at this. I'm going to give it some time. Flavor's there, there's some cotton flavor, it's breaking in. All new coils will do that. So we got to look at the top fill, very nice. Kind of reminds me Silo Beast-esque. When I saw these guys in New Jersey with this tank, the tank had some type of like guillotine style smoke TFV4 wasn't out yet and we hadn't seen it. It almost like had this sharp edge it was, uh, they, they improved on it a bit. Very nice. That flavor is ridiculously good. Okay, now the, now the coil is reading at 0.23. That's more like it. Wow. I'm impressed. Ridiculously good flavor. A nice cool to warm. Barely lukewarm. Very nice. It's a very nice vape. Happy with that. I'm going to go outside and vape. This is my Velocity RDA. And I've got a fairly aggressive build on that at, I believe it's a 0.12 or a 0.15. It's quad stack coils. I want to vape on this with my Punisher 80. And I'm not going to do it in, obviously I'm not going to do it in temperature control mode. I'm not going to do it in wattage mode either. I'm going to go to bypass mode where this is just kicking out unregulated mech mode. And all, all it shows at that stage is what your voltage is on your battery. So the way you get into that is you hold down the plus and minus and you cy it cycles through temperature control, wattage mode, and then when you see it says volts, it's reading your volts off your battery. That's bypass mode. That is just straight up. Oh, I dripped a little too much. So why would you want to do that? Well, I don't want it. I don't want regulated power. I know my build. I know exactly what I did on here. I just want straight up wattage, uh, straight up voltage, straight off the battery. And here we go. So it's reading 0.12 ohms. Hmm. And this is a regular Canthal build. You don't use bypass mode for uh, low resistance metals like nickel or titanium. That's strictly for Canthal. Maybe stainless steel if you want to play around with that. You do that in regular bypass mode just like you would on a Mac mod. That's the same as G-plat wire or square wire, or rugged wire. And it's pulling straight up voltage right off the battery. No regulation involved there. It's just straight off the battery to the build. So that is now effectively competing against 
the Joytech EVIC Mini, which has a bypass mode. Really nice. Temperature control worked just fine, legit. Uh, in wattage mode, you got 80 watts off the battery. It's about the maximum. I would want to stress any battery, and I have a good, uh, fairly high amp draw rated battery, a Samsung 25R. There you go, Dovepo, Punisher 80. Nice options, very nice vape, very nice device. The feel, the grip, the weight, everything about this, the proportions of it, I kind of love this. And, uh, and that Harvest tank, fantastic top fill. Great flavor off of that tank, those coils spot on. Nicely done, Dovepo, thank you very much.